Um, the affirmation of individual freedom requires action, and uh, affirmation without action is valueless. So what we're seeing is that if we're going to, as the oppressed group, right, the sort of the the initial focus of this analysis is obviously directed towards um, uh, building a sense of um, the requirement for action among members of the oppressor population. You, the oppressor, need to recognize and need to um, attempt to maintain a sense of solidarity with the oppressed group. Why? Because you should recognize that they're struggling for their liberation. Right? And insofar as they're struggling for their, uh, their liberation, they're also indirectly, as we've seen in previous videos, struggling for your liberation as the oppressor. Right? So if for nothing else, if for nothing but um, self-interest, we should acknowledge, we the oppressors, should acknowledge the struggle that the oppressed group is maintaining um, for our equal liberation, right? for our uniform liberation, at which point we go from this state of affairs to this state of affairs. A state of affairs where we're both dehumanized, we're both inauthentic, to a state of affairs where we're both humanized, we're both authentic. Right? That's what Freer is attempting to say. Um, the, he brings in a very technical uh, phrase, right? Uh, he calls it the oppressor-oppressed contradiction, right? Um, I'll just label it the OO contradiction, right? The oppressor-oppressed contradiction is resolved through objectively verifiable means. It is a quantifiable state of affairs. It is not abstract, right? So the oppressor-oppressed contradiction. And the question is, well, what is this, right? So the question is, what is the OO contradiction? What is the oppressor? What is the oppressor oppressed contradiction? Right, the oppressor oppressed contradiction. To understand the contradiction, you have everything that you need. Right, we've we've spoken in I've spoken in previous videos, and if you've been watching the videos up until this point, it should be easy now to recognize where the contradiction uh, manifests. We have a group, right, and the group is called. The group one is called the oppressor group, right? This is the oppressor. And we've defined the oppressor as being independent, right? So the, the, the oppressor group is classified as being independent. The whole point of it being independent, however, we recognize that there is a sense of dependency, right? And there is a dependency and that mandate, right? That mandate creates a dependency. That mandate to oppress, right, as an oppressor, that mandate to oppress an oppressed group, and or, that mandate to oppress an oppressed group, I have to relinquish my freedom. I, 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 I lose my ability to be free. I am not free not to oppress, right? The double negation means that I have to oppress, right? I am not free not to oppress. Therefore, I have to oppress. Insofar as I have to oppress, I'm really not free, right? I'm not free. If I'm not free, I cannot say that I'm functioning independent to the oppressed group. I'm actually dependent, right? And thus the contradiction, right? Thus the contradiction. I can't both be uh, independent and be dependent, right? You cannot have a state of affairs where I am both A and not A, right? You can't have this. This is a contradiction. Thus, this is also a contradiction. So one facet of the oppressed, oppressor oppressed contradiction is that the oppressor arrives at a contradiction insofar as the oppressor classifies him or herself as independent, but we recognize that insofar as the relationship between the oppressor and the oppressed group is one where I have to oppress you, right? I cannot not oppress you. Then I recognize that I'm not free, that I am dependent on oppressing you. I have to oppress you in order to maintain my status as oppressor. If I fail to oppress you, then I lose my status as oppressor. Right? Thus, I'm not independent and it's dependent. So I cannot be both independent and dependent. Thus the contradiction on this half. With respect to the oppressed population, we recognize that there is a contradiction as well. And the question was, well, how? Well, how have we um, created this dependency? Right? Well, this dependency is there is a dependency on the oppressor. Right? There's a dependency on the oppressor. I need some resources, if what have you, that the oppressor um, has 
in order to stay in my life. Not only resources, you can get a little deeper, right? More sort of uh, analytical. Now, my relationship with the oppressor, as oppressed, is such that the only thing that I have, the only means of recognizing who I am through this act of adhesion, which we saw before, is to submerge myself in oppression. At an initial stage, I don't even recognize that I'm oppressed. All I can think about, the, the, the framework of my, my faculty, is such that my, my faculty is framed entirely within the notion of oppression. And I can never escape that notion of oppression. And hence, I become a sub-oppressor, right? And we talked about sub-oppression. So there's a contradiction insofar as that I recognize myself as dependent, DEP, right? I recognize m myself as dependent and oppressed, right? I recognize myself as dependent, as oppressed, in relationship to an oppressor, but in a sub-oppressor, and this is very important, this is not easy to understand, right? But in relationship to others who are oppressed, remember we talked about sub-oppressors, right? In relationship to my oppression of another oppressed population, my relationship is similar to the relationship between an oppressor and an oppressed. I become, what? Independent, I-N-D-E, independent and oppressor. This is categorical A, not A, right? Oppressed, um, uh, the oppressed person is dependent and oppressed. We see the contradiction between dependent and independent. We see the contradiction between oppressed and oppressor, right? Again, this is A and not A, right? And thus, the contradiction for the oppressed. So, really and truly, when we're talking about the oppressor, oppressed, contradiction, the OO contradiction in Fourier. The oppressor, oppressed contradiction manifests for the oppress, the oppressor insofar as there's a claim of dependency, but really and truly there is an, uh, there's a claim of independency, but really and truly there is a dependency on the oppressed group. The OO contradiction arises for the oppress, the oppressed population insofar as the relationship with the oppressor is one of dependency, subordination, right, um, and with the oppressor, but also in a sub-oppression, I now become the oppressor from those who are already oppressed. So I'm independent and also the oppressor. So we see that this is this is a, a contradictory relationship. Um, just to, and this is why I had to do this video. I mean, this is not simple to understand. It's in the text, but you really have to know sort of how he's um, situating this with to be technical in the, within this history of philosophy, um, but also recognize that the relationship between the oppressor and the oppressed is more of a dialectical uh, relationship. It's not so easily uh, understood. So you should have an understanding of the oppressor-oppressed contradiction, um, and this relationship needs to be verified in reality, and I'm going to talk about the verification process of this relationship, but now we understand, uh, we at least understand how the contradiction arises and what really the contradiction is on both both ends. Contradiction for the oppressor, contradiction for the oppressed group. Okay. Alright, the next the next feature is the um, objective transformation of reality. And I'll abbreviate this as OTR, right? The objective transformation and as a Transformation 